we are live. Greg Tapper with Pattern AI. How you doing today? I'm doing great, David. Great to see you as always. Man, thanks for joining on the. Uh, this is a new show. What, what's the name of this? The the B two B GTM SaaS. <laughs> it's every every acronym under the sun that we can yeah, come up with. All, <laughs> all things. I think I posted this morning. It was going to be the B two B. It's the all things GTM podcast. Do we have mm -hmm. like? Do we have? Like uh, do we have like some numbers here that show us we have like four thousand followers and little hearts. They're going to go up here in a minute. And <laughs> yes, yes, I know. We're going to break LinkedIn. I mean, this thing is <laughs> is going to be huge. Um, that would be impressive because I think people are trying to do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So, and and this will be recorded as well, so we'll be able to to. Uh, Get it up on on ten bound and, and pattern AI get pattern right because oh, it's I, not pattern um, AI yeah uh, dude, if, that, if, uh, if the squatter who owns a pattern AI account is there uh, the offer still stands <laughs> I think we offered him ten thousand dollars but you know just remember you know greed is greed is dangerous in business anyway it is get pattern AI until we get we don't need that we don't need that domain but that is the one yeah. You know, it's interesting because I, I, in a Google search, I noticed that somebody had registered TenBound um, in, in just the last couple months um, in a different state, and I was like, we, we really need to protect that name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think yeah. we, we have anything on there, but I'm sure it, it happens all the time. So, I think you're such a celebrity that you already have de facto <laughs> trademark rights. You know, you would think. So, yeah. so Greg, we. You know, we were talking um, go to market in the B two B SaaS space, and uh, a mm -hmm. few topics came up. Um, one is I I just came back from the um, Saster conference that was last week, uh, mm -hmm. which was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I mean, from from somebody who runs conferences in in our world, uh, hats off to Saster for. Um, an amazing, mm -hmm. amazing experience. Uh, mm -hmm. Top, you know, top-notch content. Great, great crowd. The the uh, forum out in uh, the San Mateo County, uh, you know, whatever. I, it's where they have like county fairs. Probably it looked fairgrounds. Like yeah, pie, yeah, I yeah, think I saw a piloting contest uh, just down yeah. the street from it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they had one at, at Saster. It was. It's yeah. just you know and. <laughs> For people that uh, are, if you're in the B2B software as a service industry um, or, or serving that that market in any way, shape or form, you got to go to Saster. It, it was it was amazing. So I think I see the, uh, the yeah. hearts coming up from Jason Lemkin here that are like, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Jason Lemkin. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I'm really, uh, really impressed with with their, yeah. their conference. Yeah. And and I made it a goal. You know, just we 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 get a, a lot of questions about the technology that's coming up in in the B two B space and how it affects SDRs and AEs and marketers, and so I made it a goal to go and and talk to as many of the uh, tool providers that were uh, in the Saster uh, Tech Expo, and mm -hmm. uh, there, I had a few, <laughs> I mean, a few mm -hmm. observations. Um, and a few a few tools that that were very cool um, <clears throat> that are re relevant to our world that uh, mm -hmm. that I, I talked to. So um, I'm curious. You know, yeah, big big picture. Um, mm -hmm. You know, th there there's uh, one there there's probably like I, there had to be at least a hundred different tool providers there. Um, d displayed. Yeah, um, probably. And, least, yeah, yeah. Some some of the some of the um, the like, I mean, the, and the prices to to display must be astronomical. I would I would be scared to even think about. I was wondering. Much, I was actually yeah. wondering about that. I thought, well, maybe we'll pick it up next year. You know. <clears throat> yeah. Do our series I mean, A and get some money. Guys, start like, sponsoring. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. But, it's 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 interesting because you you got to be there. I mean, otherwise, there's just mm -hmm. so many that aren't right. And and if mm -hmm. you're not out there talking to people, getting your name out there, um, and and you know why why you're like just walking around, it's so overwhelming. 
um, to, mm -hmm. to, to have all these different providers. And so, you know, it's, it's really important that whoever's at the booth um, is, you know, engaged and looking up from your yeah. phone, yeah. you know, and, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. smiling, even though it's, it's a long day. I mean, it's, there's three or four days, I think of, of mm -hmm. Saster yeah. and um, I'm sure that they're tired uh, after a while, but yeah, they, get out of it. they take a lot of energy. And I think if you look yeah. at like Salesforce, you know, this, so this is the 20th year of Salesforce, I think, and Salesforce has become so big. You, you know, you and I <clears throat> can go back a few years, but like back in the day, it was like Oracle World, which most people who are, uh, if anybody's listening to this podcast here now, but you're like Oracle World, you know, was like the big thing. Larry Ellison would get out on stage and so on back in the day. That was, that was like the big tech company. And now it's kind yeah. of gone and Salesforce replaced it. And Salesforce is literally so big. There are sub events now that are sub conferences that people host for, you know, huge amounts of money. Um, mm. And Saster is becoming, it's more manageable probably than Salesforce, but it's really, it's pretty cool. They've carved out, you know, they've carved out, they've kind of ridden the wave and they've carved out this really big kind of moment where, you know, people in the industry need to convene at some point, um, not around a, say a company, but, <clears throat> but around a, a theme. And that's what's, I think Saster is kind of pretty exciting for. Big time. I, and there's so much energy. I mean, and, 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 you know, as a matter of fact, the, the Dreamforce conference is this week too. And I noticed yeah. that there's people that were at Saster and now they're over at Dreamforce and it's like, my God, you know, <laughs> like how much do these, do these people, do these people work for a living? <laughs> yeah. I mean, good for them. I mean, you know, and, yeah. and cause there's the connection aspect too. Um, and, yeah. But, yeah. but, but, you know, just, you know, going back to all the different tool providers, um, you know, there's, there's themes that pop up. So all of a sudden mm -hmm. you'll, you'll, you'll start to notice that five, six, seven, ten companies are attacking the same problem that you had never really thought about or, or heard mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. which was interesting. Mm -hmm. One of them, one of the, one of the big themes was, um, that I thought was interesting was, uh, compliance, like SOC 2 mm -hmm. compliance and, and, yeah. and security yeah. compliance. And mm -hmm. I talked to um, the, the guy he, who he founded this company called Sprinto, um, mm -hmm. Gearish. And I mean, essentially, um, from a sales perspective or go to market perspective, um, I guess you, you, you can get deals all the way, you know, to the finish line and everybody's mm -hmm already counting the commission checks and, you know, um, mm -hmm. leasing, the, leasing the beamers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, the deal gets squashed um, in, mm -hmm. in um, the security review. Um, yeah. Right. Right. And we're, we're um, I think I, I shared that, that spreadsheet with you, Greg, um, we're, we're going through and trying to categorize and organize all these. Mm -hmm. I, there, there had to be at least five to 10, plus companies that were trying to tackle this and um yeah, yeah. it's got to be a huge it must be a huge problem if there's so much you know mm -hmm. money trying to chase it yeah yeah and growing interesting and growing mm -hmm. yeah 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 because if, if you think about it um all these all these systems are interconnected and and uh and there's apis for everything um yeah. sending yeah. data back and forth and uh and then at the same time there's so much regulation uh that you have to stay on top of and a computer can do that a lot better than a person so their thing is if i plug this in boom gonna sail right through you'll be good yeah. to go so i thought that was What's interesting, interesting. <clears throat> yeah and, and I, um as I was preparing for the, the podcast last night, kind of getting some some uh, themes together, gave me an opportunity to think about what I was seeing there. And I think they're kind of as an entrepreneur, you know, I pay, uh, you know, I pay a little attention to like TechCrunch, which is a little bit of to me an echo chamber for entrepreneurs, but interesting to kind of keep tabs on who's talking about what. And then you've got the, kind of the conference and events and then you have just the general chatter. Uh, I pay a little bit of attention to the chatter because I think it's kind of more kind of front lines. I think there are kind of two levels of chatter. One is the friends that I have and the people I know and the colleagues in the industry and so on, especially people who've been doing this for, you know, for 10, 15, 20 plus years who've seen the cycles 
you know, what are they doing? And, and, you know, all those people, everybody I hear is talking about like machine learning. When I went to like the social events, uh, they were hosted by SaaS companies at a uh, SASTER. You don't hear as much about machine learning. So maybe it's kind of two steps uh, forward, but everybody's talking about data. And it's interesting if you go back a few years and you go back to, you know, Salesforce or, or SASTER or events like that, you know, everything was cloud, you know, and, uh, and, I, mm-hmm. and I was, I would even say back when I was in consulting, I'd say, well, are we still talking about cloud? Like, why are we talking about cloud? Like I thought that's, Largely, when the problem is 95% solved, I can I think we can say it's been solved. I mean, if people are taking day trips to the moon. We probably have that one solved. It's time to move on to Mars, right? And so uh, you don't hear about cloud anymore. Uh, it's just not something that people talk about uh, or they sell. I don't think it's because it's old hat. There is that whole thing too, where you know the first point about who's you know, what the entrepreneurs are kind of pitching. They want to sound cool, so everything is AI now. You know, on the pitches, but okay socially, uh, when you talk with people that you don't even know, like at these networking events, and, and I'm pretty outgoing. So I, I like, I just walk it around and people say, Hey, what are you working on? And, and introduce myself and everybody that I was talking to in a general sense was talking about that connected data. I think security is part of that. I think you're going to see a big mm-hmm. analytics play. Of course, we, you know, we, uh, at pattern AI tend to fo- focus on that, but you're going to see a lot of companies either in their own SaaS applications, pulling in different data sources, connecting them and having better dashboards, so to speak. You'll have people who are pure play analytics companies. There's going to, for sure, I'm uh, quite convinced that that machine learning be part of that. That's what I was hearing a lot of, but you don't hear cloud anymore. You hear a lot more about connected data. And the third thing I think you do hear about is a lot of functional automation. You've clearly got like the outreach and the sales lofts out there who kind of, you know, did a lot of the original automation. So Salesforce was software as a service, and that was kind of allowed you to kind of do things, interact with the software. And now what we're seeing, I think, over the past five, seven years, and you know, as long as probably you and I have known each other for a number of years, you're starting to see the automation, not just humans interacting with the software, but basically set it and forget it. We're going to run these sequences if it's Outreach or Sales Loft or Apollo or these companies. Um, Apollo's come out of nowhere. It's amazing. You thought that Outreach, and this is for anybody who wants to start a company, it's amazing. Like you would have thought Outreach and Sales Loft own the market. Here comes Apollo. And they're not that young. You know, they've been around for a few years, but like they're coming over and taking share from these two industry leaders that you thought was going to come down to Coke and Pepsi. <clears throat> and here comes Snapple, you know, who's like, oh, okay, there's a new category. And, and now they're doing, and they're doing all this data stuff. So data, <clears throat> less about cloud and a lot more functional automation. Those are kind of three themes that I picked up. <clears throat> yeah. And then, you know, all these problems will start to crop up as people push harder and harder to try to do that. And, and it's, it's, it's almost like, because because you, you think like, ah, oh, all the ideas, you know, are taken, right? And, and, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but, but every time you start to push the envelope of these things, then all, n- next, in five years, if we're still talking about this, we'll go yeah. to Saster and there'll be this like completely new category of, of solutions, mm-hmm. you know, that crops up mm-hmm. based on, on trying to mash together, um, you know, the data and then all the security issues that come up with that. Um, and, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. and I, I'm curious, uh, pattern AI, like what, mm-hmm. you know, what are you working on there as, as far mm-hmm. as how do you think about this? So we are a, an automated machine learning platform, which means that uh, at the core of that, by the way, people hear about machine learning. And I think what you don't hear a lot about is uh, the data pipeline. So we're an automated machine learning platform, but at our core, we are effectively uh, really sophisticated data engineering. And we take data in from different sources. We apply specifically trained machine learning models to that data. And then we produce what we call patterns. Patterns are typically visually compelling answers to very specific questions, uh, things like customer segmentation. So on and our, our focus is increasingly due to market pull and, and demand and interest. Uh, we're increasingly focused on a category, which, which I would call enterprise conversation intelligence or, or ECI. <clears throat> You'll see more people come up in this space in conversation intelligence. If you're, you know, if you're like me, you know, you pay attention like, geez, everybody's doing this. You know, if you go talk to my parents are like, what is that? I've never heard about it. So it's funny if you're, if you're in the space, it feels like everybody's doing what you're doing. It's probably only a dozen people, but it it applies to whether it's you know conversations or whatever. There is this uh, shift towards, and this is a really big concept, 
uh, the shift towards machines or algorithms, if you will, but machines analyzing data and then humans interacting with machines. So the old model was here's a bunch of data, human interacts with the data, you know, through pivot tables and, you know, things like that in Excel and, and things. And uh, that model, we believe, is going away. We, we know because uh, we see it is going away uh, and shifting toward this new model where data is coming from all these different sources. And then how are you going to unlock that data? You can't do that with Excel. It just simply breaks down. So you need to have software, specifically machine learning software and all these algorithms. And you can you can download these off of GitHub. You can get them through you know, the cloud providers like you know, Amazon and GCP and Azure and so on. And then it applies that. So really simply, uh, we pipe in data, including and especially conversations. We apply machine learning to that and we show you what's going on. So the pitch here for our company, that's the, that's the context of what I think is happening in the market. The pitch for our company is, you have lots of conversations in your enterprise. You can't see them. Uh, they're invisible to you, but you need to keep track of what your sales reps are saying. Not, not because of Big Brother. I think people have that completely wrong. It's because, you know, hey, we've got some really good strategic messaging here. Are the sales reps saying? You can't see that if you're a sales leader. And, uh, and if you're a sales rep, you can't see what other sales reps are doing that's really working. And uh, so there are a couple of companies out there. Everybody knows about Gong and, and Chorus and others. I, I think we tend to do uh, some things better than they do. But that space is really important because conversations are happening, but you can't see them. And so what if you could just push a button and suddenly see in a visually compelling way what's happening, all those conversations? That's what we're doing. And, and it seems like a pretty exciting space to us. It really is. I, so it, because the conversations that are happening, if you're not capturing those and all that intelligence is just sort of, you know, going out into the ether. So, so, mm -hmm. you know, being able to capture it, number one, and then make something useful, uh, you know, just creates so many opportunities, even with product development. Um, you know, you could see mm -hmm. how yeah. if you start to see patterns, if you will, of, of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the way that people use the product and then and then you can mm -hmm. make adjustments to that so uh, super mm -hmm. relevant um, that's a big one yeah yeah i mean and and not you know obviously there's a use case for sales and 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 mm -hmm. marketing and bringing that that language back in but everyone's out having conversations all day um and you know there, there's probably we're capturing like five percent <laughs> <laughs> of that maybe yeah, and, and your brain yeah goals. so there's there's a yeah. huge huge opportunity there um, I, I think so yeah. um there, there is this idea you know like you know we're recording this podcast why what's the point because there all there's also this idea of you know asynchronous you know learning or meetings and so on and so and you're starting to see people like slack you know now have huddles and things because people realize that you know now you and i are convening but it took a little bit of coordination we had to set it up and so on um, but it took a little, it takes convening, but there are people out there who will not be able to listen to this live podcast right here. And so does that mean that they shouldn't be able to listen? And so, you know, TV, of course, uh, has solved this problem pretty well, but we haven't solved that problem in business where, hey, there's a really important conversation or a bunch of content here that's not, you know, TikTok and people doing, you know, crazy things on TikTok, but there's like relevant business conversations. And I want a record of that. And I want to be able to go refer to that and go learn from that. And the mm -hmm. podcast uh, problems kind of solve that but but to do that at scale is really hard so nobody's going to listen to every single meeting and that's where machines come in yeah. so the old model is let me listen to me and the new model is let me analyze these things at scale it's hard to imagine a future without intelligent machines giving us uh what we call cognitive augmentation where it's like you know your brain is processing but here comes this robot this big machine is like boom and just lifts it up and then suddenly like oh geez now i can do you know linear algebra, not just two plus two. And that's, that's the model. It really is. And, and, you know, there's been such a flood of content, you know, that's available in the market, but what's really missing a lot of the times is just context and, and, mm -hmm. you know, getting like, we were talking about this, we have over 250 podcasts, you know, recordings and, mm -hmm. and within those, there's a ton of really useful, yeah. interesting yeah. information that could help people. Mm -hmm. But it's got to mm -hmm. be first gone through and picked out and then contextualized, you know, for, mm -hmm. for the right audience. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can have some a team of people do that. But how many people are really experts in, you know, go yeah. to market sales development and can pick out things that are right? So yeah. this is another right. that case. Doesn't, 
Yeah, no, it's true. Um, and we, we thought yeah. about that a lot. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a great, you know, it's great to be in a market where you realize there's a lot going on, um, you know, and to bring it back yeah. kind of to what you do as well. There is a thirst right now for kind of technical knowledge and guidance and leadership on selling better. You know, when you and I were first starting out, uh, it didn't exist quite uh, at the level it does today, where there's just so much knowledge. In my first company, you know, some years ago, I was trying to figure things out. I would read Inc. Magazine, which now is, you know, it's just one of a thousand different magazines for startups. And startup has become this whole movement unto itself. But when I was starting, you know, a, my first company back in early 2000s, like to be an entrepreneur was a completely harebrained thing. Like you went to consulting, you went to banking, and that was it, right? Or you went to corporate. But now it's like become, it's, mm -hmm. it's very acceptable, even cool to be an entrepreneur. But the same thing is that like, I had to learn about like, how do you sell? What are the best practices? There, there were no benchmarks, but they're very hard to get. You know, Gartner mm -hmm. itself wasn't, you know, that old. Um, they didn't have a sales practice or anything like that, like they do today and so on. And so this like ideas of 10 bound and then that having rich communication like this, like we have is, so things mm -hmm. are getting much more sophisticated there, whether it's a sales podcast or it's, you know, sales advisory services like you have, or, you know, analytics is suddenly becoming, making people look really smart because machines can be trained on very specific problems and do those things at scale, like what we do. Um, I can show you patterns across your 250 uh, conversations here, your podcast that you have no idea are happening that somebody, you know, sitting offshore couldn't do either. Our machine can do that, you know, in minutes, which is pretty cool. But these things are, are, things are going really fast and, and the tools available to us today are just extraordinary. I mean, it, there's never been a better time I think to be in business. So there's so many enablers out there for people that's, it's really pretty cool. It is very cool. Yeah, for sure. And, and um, you know, there's, there's sort of just in time, people kind of want just in time and, uh, um, you know, answers because those are instantly co um, contextual mm -hmm. um, it mm -hmm. seems. And, and so you'll see a lot of communities, um, you know, pop up, where they just are like, I could spend a bunch of time going through Google and reading all this stuff and listening to, you know, 200 podcasts, or I just mm -hmm. pop in and ask somebody for advice, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or they go yeah. to review sites and they just kind of scroll mm -hmm. through to get a, a general idea about what's, what's out there. So that, that buyer behavior is, is changing as well. Um, yeah. And or, think, or they go to conferences, right? I mean, I literally yeah. like I thought ah, I'd seen it all, you know. Um, but um, you know, I just no, it's, it's I amazing. To... Yeah. It's, when I was yeah. in consulting, um, I'm not gonna mention which firm I worked for because you're gonna give them a hard time about it. But uh, when I was in uh in consulting, <laughs> yeah, I would see these it. these younger consultants and you were a um, right? Yeah. Um, now, now I'm going to have to say it was McKinsey. It was not BCG. <laughs> no, them's, them's fighting words. No, it's BCG's great firm. But we would sit in the, in the team room and, yeah, you know, you these younger kind of BAs, the business analysts who sit there and, you know, they're just out of cause yeah. and they're, they're, you know, they're whip smart and they're really good at research and analyzing. And they'd sit there and they'd, they'd sit, and I'd be like, go down the hall and talk to that guy or that gal who's been doing this for yeah. 20 years and go ask them. You're going to learn mm -hmm. more in 10 minutes. And that's like the conference, like you'll learn more in 10 minutes from talking with somebody who's either in the space and has a yeah. perspective or somebody who's been doing this for a long time and has lots of you know wisdom and experience. And you will ever by reading reviews and by whatever, you know, David Delaney, you know, you know, 10 times more about sales dev than I do. It, you know, I can read about it. Or I can just give you a call. I'm sure you'll probably have to pay for that. But uh, but, you know, you can ask questions and you can interact yeah, and you can adjust and adapt to the conversation. You can learn. And I think that's and then and the second thing is I'm not quite so sure that anybody reads anything anymore, do they? Because like, you know, short form, we, we don't even watch long videos anymore. It's like now it's just it's all video that's been compressed to short form video. Like you have to get a little concerned about the next generation of attention span because like it's a 15 second visual attention span versus sort of pondering complicated uh ideas and and thoughts and philosophies which really you know give you deep understanding of something i i i get concerned oh, a little bit about painful i mean it, you know one of the most painful things i i try to do and i hardly ever can do is you just take a, a digital free day and grab a piece of paper and a pen 
and just like turn your phone off and go for a walk. I mean, it's painful, you know, because yeah. we're in that, that, like that TikTok world of instant, constant, you know, short forms. Yeah. And you're right. Yeah. I mean, we 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 do. We put out, you know, two or three big, deep research papers. They're very expensive, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. And um, they're well done. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think people kind of prefer just let me just go ask somebody on on, you know, this community or I'll call mm -hmm. it Greg. I, I, they just need that that instant context. Um, and you're right. It's it's uh, one of the things that we talk about with training um, SDRs is is, uh, you know, reach out to the people within your company that have been in the field for 20 years yeah. and and yeah. are relevant to the your target market you know and and have lunch with them and and ask them what their problems are to give it to you in their words um so, you know versus I, uh, I like that yeah i have a, i have a i have an approach to that if you want to hear it which is great so a friend of mine who's like one of these executive coaches really good and um he has a challenge and I, I put it for anybody who's listening out there or anybody who listens to the recording of this, this is a great challenge. So uh, 50 lunches a year. Now that gets expensive. You need a corporate budget for that typically or whatever, or a lot of time. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll water it down a little bit. 50 coffees a year. Okay. And here's the, and I've kind of got my own approach to it now. So 50 coffees a year. You can't go with the same person twice. That's once per week with a two week vacation from that challenge. It's the it's the coffee meeting challenge. Call it that. Can we can we get a hash? Where's the, where's the showrunner here? Can we get a hashtag on this? And the, yeah, it's me. so it's a coffee <laughs> coffee meeting challenge. Drew Sanders at Banyan Strategies is the as the friend of mine who came up with this, uh, and it was his advice. It he's in it. He's a master networker. But um, so in fact, when I was at McKinsey, that was my whole thing was actually sit down. And now as an entrepreneur, it's even more imperative sit down and talk with people and say, hey, David, let's go get coffee. And here's the thing, 50 coffees a year, not the same person twice. And uh, and here's how you do it. You arrive with perspectives you want to share, okay. things you want to ask, and then uh, recommended next steps. So um, here's what I'm working on. What do you think? What are the next steps? And then what are you working on? Here's what I think. Here's what I think should be your next steps. And that mutual exchange of those three things. Here's what I'm working on. What do you think? What do you recommend as next steps? Or who should I be talking to? And it's amazing. I'll sit down with you and you'll say, you know, that sounds really cool. I think ABC and XYZ, you should be talking with Bob, who's, you know, a, a, an SDR with me, or Mary, who's mm -hmm. now CRO at XYZ company. Uh, mm -hmm. I challenge you to do that. We should talk in 50 weeks. It's, it's really hard to get coffee 50 times a year with new people. But your network will explode. And what you learn is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and you will shape mm -hmm. your perspectives because people give you this feedback. And by the you know the 49th or 50th meeting, I think the most I, I've done so far is like 35 or something. By the, by the dozenth or you know 20th mm -hmm. meeting, all that feedback is going to shape your perspectives in really unique ways. I think that's why you and I caught up on this podcast. It's like, hey, there needs to be a podcast where we just talk about these things and, and um, you know, get these ideas out there. Anyway, coffee. Big time. I, that, that is, that is um, amazing advice. That's the, the 50 coffee challenge. Um, I, I love that. And, and, um, you know, it, it's interesting that uh, I've been reading and, and well, listening to these uh, audios of uh, this lady named Joanne Black, um, who her her th big thing is um, no more cold calling, and and she lays out a referral hmm. system. And um, I know we're we're up against the time. This has been so fun. Oh, we right? are. But, um, we need to schedule two yeah. hours next time. I know, right? <laughs> we, we've hardly. I've got like five other things I want to talk to you about. Um, yeah. But real quick. Um, uh, you know, no more cold when, calling. You, when you're, when you're setting out to have the meetings, how do you convey that you're not trying to sell anything? Um, you know, you're just, you just want to have coffee right. and ask questions right. because I think people may, maybe it's just me, but they might put their guard up a little bit. Um, you know, uh, you know, I got to listen. I totally to agree. Stuff. Yeah. What, what do they say that, uh, if you want to make money, if you want money, ask for advice. If you want advice, ask for money. 
you know, and so, uh, and so if the, if the perspective is, to, you know, here's what I'm working on. What do you think? What's your advice? What do you recommend as next steps? What you're really saying is, Hey, I want to show up and give you perspectives. And if you're, you know, in my role now as a CEO of a, of a modern, you know, innovative startup and your role as a, as an advisor, you know, to companies, you know, mm. hopefully we have unique perspectives that if we sit down with somebody who's an executive, and I think what's pretty cool about our stage and our careers now, you probably seen the same is most of my friends and colleagues are all in the C-suite now or very, very high up. And I can just make calls to people and it's really pretty cool, right? And anybody who's younger, who's listening should say, you know, this whole remote thing is that's fine, but go get 50 coffees a year, but develop those relationships because you're going to turn around when you're like, you know, 35, 45, 55, 70, 80. And the guys that I know and, you know, gals who are 80 are like, oh, let me call so-and-so who's the president of this corporation, you know, and it's boom, it's done. Anyway, but what's wow. valuable is they'll give you the introduction and you know that in your own career because you have a perspective. And, mm. and I, I think, you know, that's why I enjoy talking with you. That's why you and I catch up periodically. It's great to do on a podcast, but like, I like hearing your mm. perspectives and, and also getting your feedback on things that I'm working on. I hope we do this again. I, you know, it's gone way too fast as always, uh, but I always really enjoy talking with you and talking about these topics. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's uh, we definitely got to make this a regular thing. And um, Andrew, uh, in the in the comments there, it was was great to see you at Saster. And we 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 need to have a coffee. You could be the first one. <laughs> um, but Greg, thank well, we know you. we had one. When we had one viewer today. That's cool. <laughs> oh yeah, man. That's where you, it starts with one, right? Zero and one. Yeah. So I see you got fifteen uh, yeah, thousand followers on LinkedIn. I'm I'm impressed. I think I have like three or something like that. I, I feel like <laughs> I look at that last night. I said I better get my maybe my fifty coffees isn't working, but I better get my my butt going here. Well, no, I fifty coffees is like a deep, you know, actual right. relationship versus yeah. you're a philanderer, uh, wide, which is just vanity metrics, really. So. Yeah, but that's uh, cool. They're good, Greg. This has been great, man. And thank you, you know, yeah. for sharing your wisdom and coming on. And we'll definitely do it again. I'm looking forward to it, David. And we'll go and we will go get coffee. I would, uh, we'll do that as well. <laughs> Off the record, thank look you. forward to it. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks, David. Mm -hmm.